Today we're doing an easy car upgrade that you won't want to miss. Hello and welcome back to Gears and Tech. Yes, that is right. We're doing an easy, easy, easy car upgrade. And no, this does not involve swapping your existing stereo. You see, most cars nowadays actually have a pretty decent car stereo already. In fact, even if you're getting a car that's a little bit older, 10 years old, 15 years old, they even had some pretty good sounding car stereos. It's not like back in the 90s when you were getting a total crap stereo that just didn't sound good and you had to add a lot of aftermarket accessories just to get it sounding okay. No, cars these days have multiple speakers, they have proper full range sound, and most of them even include a sub of some sort or they provide a deep bass sound. So you can get that full sound spectrum. But if your car does not support connecting to your favorite Android or Apple device using CarPlay or Android Auto, well then you might be considering a stereo upgrade. But that's where a product like this comes in. This is the CarPureRide W903 Android Auto and Apple CarPlay add-on device. We're gonna look at the features that this thing includes, what's inside the box, and we'll even do a setup and unboxing. We're gonna do it all in this video today. So the first thing we should do is a quick unboxing just to see what comes in the box. Now this is the main unit. We're gonna explore this in greater detail, but I wanna see what else is in the box has a suction cup window mount. I've reviewed others of these kinds of products and they don't include a window mount. So you end up trying to suction cup it to your dash or stick it to your dash and it doesn't hold up very well. So this is an extendable telescopic window mount, which is really nice to see included in this kit. This is a rear camera and a sticky pad for applying the rear camera with a very long cable. Look at this a little bit closer when we get into the features and everything, but that's a cool add-on and it makes this thing well worth the price. How much is it? We'll talk about the price once we're done the unboxing. Nord VPN. Maybe you've never considered a VPN before because they are only for criminals and people that have something to hide. But that is simply not true. VPN stands for Virtual Private Network. A VPN creates an encrypted tunnel for your data which protects your online identity by hiding your IP address and allows you to use public Wi-Fi hotspots safely. But if you have nothing to hide, why would you need a VPN? For secure online entertainment. Do you like gaming online? Well, forget about DDoS attacks and bandwidth throttling with NordVPN. It's a VPN that gamers love and it's very gamer friendly. Do you want a more relaxed evening of sitting back and enjoying a show? Watch your favorite TV series and movies without slowdowns. NordVPN can save your movie night by preventing your ISP from throttling your connection. Also, top secret tip, you can access shows in other regions that are normally region blocked by using a VPN and setting your home connection to whatever country the show that you want to watch is airing from. This works with Netflix, Hulu, and all of the major streaming companies to access those shows that normally you wouldn't be able to see. For private internet browsing, government agencies, marketers, and internet service providers would all love to track and collect your browsing history, messages, and other private data. The best way to hide it? Using a VPN to keep your data safe. For safe traveling, Use NordVPN to secure your connection on public Wi-Fi so you can browse in full privacy even when you're far away from home. Hackers have many methods to steal your data on public hotspots, but with a VPN, your online traffic is invisible to them. Ready to give NordVPN a try? Click the link down below in the description for exclusive Gears and Tech offers and discounts on a brand new signup you can cancel anytime but grab this deal before it expires 
Signing up through the link below does help this channel out a little bit extra as well, and we really appreciate your support. Let's get back to the video. This is the typical dash mount with a sticky, double-sided sticky. This is actually flexible, which is really nice because not everyone's dash is perfectly flat like that. So this would actually form and roll to the dash that you would have. It's also adjustable up and down and rotates. Very, very nice looking sticky mount. This of course is how you're gonna power it using a plug-in cigarette adapter that has a USB-C angled cord, which is fabulous to see because it allows you to do a very discreet, clean installation where you're not seeing wires hanging out all over the place. And it's one of the things that separate a high-end Android Auto add-on versus those cheap ones that you've seen on Amazon for like $100 or less. And an auxiliary cable. Now, why do you need an auxiliary cable? We'll talk about that in the features, but top secret tip. If you are using the auxiliary connection and you're concerned about the sound quality, many users have reported poor sound quality using the auxiliary line from this to their stereo system. And in most cases, replacing this cable with a different one of higher quality seemed to fix the problem. I don't know why. And if you use this one and you're happy with it, great, use it. But many users have reported that the sound quality from the cable is not as great as they had hoped. So try swapping the cable before you write off this unit because there's a lot of great features that it would suck to miss out on just because of a cheap cable. And last, we've got the manual, CarPlay manual. It's uh, full color. It has a lot of instructions, how to install it, how to set it up, how to actually connect it with your phone and adjust all of the settings. Obviously, I'm not gonna read this and I will walk you guys through some of the setup and features and everything, so you might not need to read it either, but if you do, all of the details are in there. And that leaves us with the main event. This is the actual device here. We're gonna just pull this out of the protective bag. This features a 9.3 inch IPS capacitive touchscreen. That means it feels great and looks good from pretty much any angle. It's very, very wide. The build quality is actually surprisingly stable. It's hefty enough that feels quality. It doesn't have any major twisting. We've kind of walked through some of the features, especially on the side here. There's a lot of stuff going on on the side here. We have the auxiliary output first. Then we have a TF card slot, which 64 gigabyte micro SD card. That's gonna be handy for the onboard recording of the camera system, which we haven't talked to you about yet, but yes, it does have a camera. Next is the AV in, that's where the rear view camera is gonna plug into. And then beside that is the USB-C power. One thing that you will probably not think about, but you are gonna definitely appreciate is that this whole panel you can see is inset from the screen itself. That means that when it's on your dash, all of those cables are behind here where you can't see them and they can come up behind the device. So even from a sharp angle, it's well, well hidden. Some of the cheaper models that I've seen have it right on the outside edge. So you got this ugly USB cable, ugly auxiliary cable. I mean, it's cheap, but cheap doesn't need to be ugly, but it is. So this is a little bit more expensive and it makes it look really cool. Coming around the bottom, there's really nothing on there. Some cooling fins. On the top, there's a power button right over here with some more cooling fins. On the back, there is the mounting plate. You know, you can stick your, your windshield mount on there or you can use your stand-up mount, which we're gonna use for this video. And it's got this. This is a camera that faces forward and it works as a full DVR dash cam. It can record at up to 2K resolutions, but it's got a neat little trick. It can pop up like this, and then it can swivel like this so that it looks inside your car. Now, why do you want a camera that looks inside your car? Well, maybe you're an Uber driver. Maybe you have people in your car and you wanna keep an eye on what's going on and record everything. This'll do that. You can also adjust the angle to all kinds of different positions. So if this is mounted off to the side of your car instead of in the dead center, you can adjust so that you can see better the front of your car. If you're okay with just looking out the front, you can drop that down and have the sleek, clean look from there. Even if it's up, the backside of it is still very sleek and very clean. It's a really neat feature 
and we'll explore kind of how it works once we power this thing up. Let's explore the features at a glance. We already talked about the 9.3 inch HD IPS capacitive touchscreen. It does support voice control. That would be Apple, Siri, and Android voice control on Google, depending on which phone you have. It has dual cameras. So we've explored the front facing camera and we've talked about the rear camera. The front camera obviously rotates up to 350 degrees and the rear camera has a wide angle view of what's behind you. It has full automatic light sensing front display. So if it's bright out, it'll brighten the display so that you can see what you're looking at. If it's really dark outside, you don't wanna be blinded by this thing. So it'll see that it's dark and it will lower the brightness of the display automatically, which works really great when you're using it in a vehicle where you're driving in daytime and in nighttime in tunnels and, and all that sort of thing, automatically adjusting. It does have built-in audio. It supports an inbound speaker, but it also supports connectivity through Bluetooth, through auxiliary line out, and FM radio transmitter. So you definitely can get this connected to your car somehow, some way. The best way to connect it up is obviously through Bluetooth to your car stereo. And the main reason for that is it would allow the controls on your steering wheel to still work. So volume up and volume down will still work, but also skip forward and skip back for your songs will also fully work with your steering wheel controls if you connect this through Bluetooth to your car stereo. And we'll walk you through those connections in a few minutes once we get it powered on and get my phone connected to it. But Bluetooth is an ultimate game changer. If your vehicle does not support Bluetooth, it's okay. You can use the auxiliary line out, which we talked about, and many vehicles do have an auxiliary line in still. But if your vehicle doesn't have auxiliary line in or Bluetooth, you can tune it to an FM frequency and then make this output your audio through that FM frequency. Not the best sound, but you weren't doing it for sound at that point, you're doing it for features and functionality. And the main advantage of this over a regular Android Auto audio stereo is your car stereo sounds good already. No need to buy a stereo, swap it out, get an expensive kit, pay somebody to, to swap it for you if you don't know how to do it. This is very much plug and play. Anybody can install this in your car. And I'm gonna show you, I mean, you'll have to imagine that we're in a car, but let's just figure out how easy this is. So I'm gonna take this guy, and then we're simply going to go like this and attach this on here. And just like that, ready to install in your car. This is as hard as it gets. Then all you do is plug this in to your cigarette adapter, and you're off to the races. I obviously don't have a cigarette adapter here, so I'm gonna plug it into a USB-C power supply. Now that we've done our first boot up, I wanna show you guys how easy it is to connect to Android Auto. It's booted up. This is first boot, and I've got my phone. All I'm gonna do is go into my settings, I'm gonna to go to connections and I'm gonna to go to Bluetooth and I'm gonna look for a new Bluetooth device. And right here at the bottom, I see Car Pure Ride BT49FE. I'm gonna say pair. I'm just gonna click pair, see what happens. So now it says, do you want to pair? Yes, I do. And now it is connected. And now I can push Android Auto right there. And just like that, I've not clicked anything else. It immediately opened Android Auto. It's pulled up my GPS and it's pulled up my Spotify. It's ready to play some music and tell me where I wanna go. Just like that, there's nothing else to do. So my phone, I can just stick it off to the side here. This is ready to go. It's ready to do everything that I wanna do. Now, if I push this button down here, I can pull up different apps. So I can go through all of my apps exactly like you can with Android Auto. I can pull up Messenger, I can pull up Waze, I can pull up my maps. I also have my three most recently used apps here. It also shows me my time up here, shows my battery, and it shows me my cellular connection. I see it all right there. This is everything. This is the full Android experience. I don't need to walk you through what you can do with Android Auto because whatever you can do with Android Auto, you can do with this. The key thing here is this little, I don't know if you guys can see it, this little slide around piece here, that pulls up the quick menu so we can turn our brightness. It was on full brightness here, but I can adjust my brightness up and down. I can also change my sound options. Let me go home. There we go, we're back home. 
And then I have all of my settings here where I can do anything that I want. Here's your general settings, here's your camera settings, and here's your system settings. Now in the camera settings, we can adjust our record resolution. So it wants to record by default at 1080p. We can go to 2.5K. We can adjust backup lines on the camera. We have all the options that you have with a regular dash cam. So we've got the ability to have collision sensing. We've got segment duration, so it chops it up into pieces. You can have auto records. Car starts up, it just immediately starts recording and it'll do a loop recording. If there's an accident, it will save the recording in a separate folder so that you can pull that accident data off and show it to your insurance company, the police, whoever you need to show it to, it's all in there. If you're ready to see the camera, there's a button right here for camera. And this is full screen, so you can see my studio right there. Do you wanna see something really cool? We can go into the settings and we can enable split screen mode like this. Then we can go back into Android Auto and now we have a view of the front facing camera as well as my Android Auto. And you can switch which side it's on. So for me, I want the camera on the far side away from me because I wanna be able to see this. And because the screen's so wide, it easily fits all of that. If I can switch the camera. Oh, I don't have the rear facing camera on right now. So it's not gonna show me the rear camera, but if you have the rear camera hooked up, you can actually toggle between which one is live. So you can have the rear camera showing or the front camera. You can also, if you don't wanna see Android Auto, you can have it in split screen camera mode where it shows the front and rear camera at the same time on the screen. Of course, I can't show that to you guys right now because I don't have the camera hooked up, but as far as connecting and playing with it, it is really cool. Now I can show you guys what my studio looks like here by turning that camera around. You guys don't really want to see that though. It's way less exciting. It's so much cooler looking over here. You're like, wow, it looks so cool there. And you see it over there and you're like, that's not so cool. There's so many other options available to you, but as a base unit, this is so easy to install. It is so easy to use. Now, the price. Price versus performance. We do have to talk about the price. The price is 269 US dollars. And I know that seems like a lot for an Android device, but consider this. It's an Android Auto Apple CarPlay device. It is also a dash cam. It is also a backup camera system. It does it all in one and it's actually integrated really, really well. Oh, you can have a separate backup cam, a separate dash cam, and a separate Android Auto device, but you're easily gonna spend just as much money and you're gonna have subpar quality of each of those. This does 2K video recording in the front. It has full backup support. It's really a good value when you figure it out. But if that's not good enough, I'll put a link in the description with a discount code. You can click that link, get an additional discount on ordering it directly from the Car Pure Ride website. They have a lot of other options, and if you don't need the backup camera, for example, there's a different model that has no backup camera. If you want something that's more of a square screen instead of so long, they've got those as well, and there's different price points for each. But this one is hailed as kind of the flagship device, and I have to say, the price for performance is high. I've used the cheap ones, I've used the $80 ones, the $100 ones, the $60 ones. They're slow, they're laggy, they work. They all work, more or less. But this one is very, very snappy and the screen quality is much better. Everything about it says high quality. And that is why this is one of my top picks for an upgrade for anyone who's looking for something to make their car more usable if they don't already have Android Auto in their car. Hey, thanks for watching all the way to the end of this video. We hope you enjoy the content in this video. We'd love to have you come back. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And for those subscribers who are looking for that extra special thing that you can do to support this channel, consider joining our members group. That's where we're building this community, the Gears and Tech community where we can all enjoy content together. You'll get special perks, which we'd love for you to check out by clicking the link down below. For those of you who are just happy to watch the video, that's okay too. 
you can check out some of our other content right over here, where we've got some previous videos that have already been uploaded and enjoyed by many of our viewers already. We do hope to see you again. This has been Gears and Tech. Have a great day.